I have always liked the process of commuting. Every phase of the journey is a pleasure to me. There is a regularity about it that is agreeable and comforting to a person of habit. The peace of my corner seat by the window, reading a newspaper and watching the world fly by against the gentle noise and motion of the journey. Believe me, there's nothing like routine and regularity for preserving one's peace of mind. Ours is a smallish station of about 19 or 20 people gathering there to catch the 812 train to the city. We're a group that rarely changes. When I arrive at the station with my usual four minutes to spare, they're all there, unchanged and unchangeable. I like that. That was until last Tuesday when I immediately became aware that something was wrong. A stranger stood plump in the middle of the platform. He looked as though he owned the place, carrying a cane instead of an umbrella, shoes brown instead of black, and a grey hat cocked at some ridiculous angle. Grummet, who's the bounder? Search me. Pretty unpleasant. Very. That stranger followed me into my compartment. Nobody's done that for 15 years. Here, if you please, was this fellow straddling my seat, blowing his nose and smoking some disgusting pipe. Uh, do you mind the pipe? This is a smoking carriage. You can do it if you please. Huh. Yeah, I just thought I'd ask. Something about his manner seemed overwhelmingly familiar. That curiously crisp, familiar voice. The way he spat his words out like some quick fire machine gun. Where had I seen him before? That's it, the cane. It was Foxley, or Gallopin' Foxley, as we used to call him. The last time I saw him, I was still in school. Ripping day. Hmm, quite right. There was no mistaking the voice now. It hadn't changed at all, except the things I had been used to hearing it say were different. It was a curious sensation, sitting next to this man who, 50 years before, had made my life so miserable. I suppose it all began when Foxley first met my father at the beginning of the boarding school. What's where you're going, young man? Don't they teach you better manners at this school? I would not wish for any son of mine to pick up such disgraceful habits. <laughs> Sorry. Bruce Foxley never forgot this episode and imagine my reaction when I found myself living in the same house as him. I became his personal slave. Have you finished cleaning my room yet, boy? I... I think so. I would stand trembling as he took out a single white glove and ran it along the picture tops. That finger was an instrument of doom. Nearly always, it found a tiny crack that I had overlooked. Oh, no, no, no. He would turn smiling a dangerous smile. So, you're a lazy boy, aren't you? I thought I'd done it all. Your father wouldn't want you to grow up a slacker now, would he? If I recall, he's so particular about such matters. Mm. No. Meet me tonight mm. in the changing rooms. Some of my worst memories are in that changing room, and the rest of the day would be agony waiting for evening to come. So... What is it to be this time? Five strikes with the dressing gown on or three with it off? It's the first thing you learn when you arrive. Always keep the dressing gown uh, on. Uh, I, uh, we'll have it three without then, shall we? Now, stand over there and touch your toes. Foxley would always walk to the other end of the room before he beat me. I would look between my legs and see him bounding towards me. Anyone who has been properly beaten will tell you that the real pain doesn't come until about eight or ten seconds after the initial stroke. Foxley knew all about this time lag. Well, don't they teach you better manners at this school? Thank you. Thank you for the beating, Foxley. He never gave me a moment to myself. He forced me to do everything for him, and if I didn't, it was a beatable offence. Almost everything was a beatable offence, like making his toast slightly overdone, or failing to fold his clothes properly, or banging the study door when he was stuck.
Looking at him now was a peculiar experience. He was no longer dangerous, but all the memories were still there. Maybe I should tell him what I thought of him. I could lean over and tap him on the knee and watch his face as I begin talking about our school days together. I'd make it nice and loud so all the people in the carriage could hear. How embarrassing. I could finally get my revenge upon dear old Foxley. He glanced up and caught me staring at him with a flicker of irritation in his eyes. This was my chance. I do hope you'll excuse me. I'd rather like to introduce myself. My name is Perkins, William Perkins. I was at Repton School in 1907. I'm glad to meet you. Uh, mine's Fortescue, Jocelyn Fortescue, Eton, 1916. 